here we were in mid-March, and the call from God had come at a prayer and Bible conference in October. And I don't know if it's Satan, but certainly something hindered, and we still had not been able to move to Colorado. We had finally gotten a date for closing on the property, so everybody was really excited about that. We've been able to get the other house fixed, and in fact, something really funny happened. Well, it, was, it was around midnight, and uh, uh, <clears throat> we were both uh, very tired, and, and then that neighbor said, blankety blank, do it tomorrow. I, I, I agree, let's go home. <laughs> So the kids had sent all the letters to their friends. They would brought all their schoolwork home and were just waiting over that last weekend before the closing. And I believe it was on a Friday night, the phone rang and it was the title company saying that we could not close as planned and for a reason that was unbelievable and it's unbelievable to this day, they said, that the original platting of the land where we uh, the house was, which was not a new house, it was probably 40 or 50 years old. They said that the alley had never been abandoned and that the garage and the trees that were 35, 40 feet tall were in the alley right of way. And that had to be abandoned before we could have a closing. We had only owned this house for five years and at the time that we bought it, we had title insurance, so it didn't make any sense at all. But the title company said what we had to do was everyone who was in that plat, all the houses that were in it, which I don't know how many there were, had to be uh, agree to abandon this alley, so they all had to be contacted, and we had to go to court. So here we were. The kids had to go back to school. We said, if you make a way, Lord, however, we will go and forget all this about the house and selling and, and uh, head for Denver where you've called us to go. Without question, we needed funds to be able to <clears throat> make the trip to Denver. The Lord worked it out to where one of our close friends had had relatives in in uh, Detroit, um, and they wanted some work done. And so I went and uh, worked almost day and night for about a, <clears throat> a week. And uh, this particular lady, uh, I wondered when she was gonna go to the bank, and uh, I was very concerned and so she goes out to her freezer. And I said, "What is what is this? I need money. I don't I don't need anything from the freezer." And uh, I'm I'm just getting a little bit irritated, um, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out what was in those little uh, frozen tinfoil. They were hundred dollar bills. <laughs> and so she was. Uh, I was I was in a state of shock. So it was finally time to pack up and head toward Denver. As you can imagine, it was with much excitement and thanksgiving that we did that. We had people there that, from the church that was willing to help us pack and we were packed so tight, but we had uh, sold so many things on purpose so that we would only take the very minimum. So basically we had our beds and our clothes and our kitchen utensils and things like that. In fact, we took everything we owned in two trailers for a family of eight. So we were starting over in Jesus' name and with lots of thanksgiving and expectation. It actually was another six months before we were able to close on the house. We lived next door to a judge and the judge's mother lived with her and had lived in that neighborhood for many years. And she said she recalled that that uh, alley right of way had been abandoned in 1913. And the title company just carelessly missed that, that abandonment proceeding. And so it was Christmas time 
and we made a trip back to Michigan at that time with the family and closed on the house. So goodbye house. He was there all the time. He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time.